Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to determine if an equation is a function. Um, so previously, we've looked at you know uh, tables, graphs, mapping, coordinate points to determine if they represent a function. And you know it was relatively simple to identify that. You know every x had to uniquely map to one y, or we could apply like the vertical line test, and it was rather simple to be able to determine you know if a relation um, was a function or not. So now what we're going to be doing is looking at uh, equations. And basically what we're going to try to do is solve for y uniquely. And as long as y can be solved uniquely, then we know that for every x value that we enter into the equation, or at least every uh, independent value, that our y value is going to be unique. Um, and we'll come across, I'll kind of talk about some problems where we start seeing when the, um, when the equation starts to not be a function. But the first step we really want to do for all of these problems, we're going to basically be, be going through the same process, and that is to isolate the y and make sure that it can be solved uniquely. So um, in this example here, I can just solve, subtract an x here, and I get y equals, you can just write the negative, negative x in front, negative x plus 7. And therefore, that is, um, I have solved for y uniquely for every x value. It doesn't matter whatever number I plug in for x, right? That's my independent variable, y is my dependent. For any value I plug in for x, I'm always going to get one unique answer for y. So therefore, that is a, um, I solve for y uniquely. So we'll call that a function. And I'll just put an f there for function. Um, into the next equation, you guys can see that this is uh, a little bit more, a little more different. Have some different numbers, but again, if we just follow the same rules, here we get two y equals negative three x minus five, divide by two, divide by two. You know, y equals negative three halves x minus five halves. Um, but again, by solving, I solved, I solve for y, and it's still producing y uniquely. So therefore, again, this is just a function. Okay. Um, now in this next example, you see an x squared. Um, so this is going to start coming into some issues for us. But in this exact problem, again, to solve for y, I don't really need to do anything crazy. Again, I can just use my inverse operations, and everything uh, really kind of works smoothly here. Divide by 2, divide by 2. Here I separated them. For this one, I'll just leave them um, together. Okay. But again, Every single time I plug in a number in for x, any number I plug in, and, and if you're you know, having trouble wrapping your head around this, just pick some random numbers. Plug them in for x. Every single time you plug them in for x, you're going to get one unique y. All right? um, over here, uh, same thing, but now you can see that my y is squared. So when I'm following my inverse operations, I'm going to do the same thing. I want to isolate the y, right? But when I isolate the y, I've got to make sure that I'm solving for y uniquely. So I divide by negative 7, divide by negative 7, and then I have y squared equals, let's see, that becomes an x minus 1. So now I've applied all my inverse operations, but the only inverse operation I have not gone into, so far I've just been add, subtract, and multiplying. Um, but now you can see my inverse operation here is squaring. So to introduce, to undo squaring, I need to take the square root. But the issue here now is when I introduce the square root, I now have to include plus or minus x minus 1. Sorry, that's still the square root of x minus 1. All right, and the purpose of that goes into just, you know, just kind of go back to let's solve for x squared equals 4. Well, this has two solutions. Now I'm solving for x. Well, it's, let's just pretend for this one might be a little more difficult. So let's look at y squared equals 4. If I wanted to solve for y here, you'll notice that this is not two unique um, solutions. There's not one unique solution for y because when I subtract this, I have y equals plus or minus 2. And the reason being is because if you were to plug in positive 2 in for y, you'd get 4. If you were plugging negative 2 in for y, you would still get 4. So when you introduce the square root, you have to include plus or minus. But what the issue is, what that means is this y is now not unique. There are now two different answers for this case. So therefore, since my y is not unique, this is not a function. Okay, um, then we get into over one over here. We have x squared plus y squared equals nine. Hopefully, maybe in geometry class you remember what this function looks like. Um, this would actually provide a function of a circle. So if you actually know with a radius of three, you would actually already know that this does not pass the vertical line test. However, if we just wanted to look at this, let's you know again do the same thing. Subtract the x squared on both sides, and we'd have y squared equals uh, let's do nine minus x squared. And again, I have to undo the squaring. 
So when I undo the squaring, I have to, in, I have to do plus or minus y equals plus or minus the square root of 9 minus x squared. So again, since I do not have a unique y because there's two solutions, that is not a function. So the correlation that I want you to see is um, as long as y is linear right now, so far what we've determined, as long as y is linear, we're good. It's a function. Doesn't matter really what x is, but as long as y is linear, it's good. When, lo when y is quadratic, or hence raised up to an even power, it's not going to be, um, well, at least it's from quadratic, it's not going to be a uh, function. Okay? Because therefore, taking the square root, as I mentioned over here, is going to produce two dis different results. So therefore, our y is not unique. Over here, we see we have another square root. It's kind of a little interesting. Uh, this is actually a very common function uh, that, or sorry, didn't want to give it away. But this is a very common equation that we will see um, quite a bit. Um, but without graphing, if you don't know what the graph looks like, let's just use, what did I doing? Why am I always solve for this? Oh, OK, all right. Well, I, yeah, I guess that was the problem here. So in this example, I was getting ahead of myself. Uh, the reason why this is a function and this is not a function is because here we're just saying just take the positive square root. We're not saying plus or minus. We're just saying the square root, positive square root of this. Or you know we could even say take the negative you know square root. But it doesn't really matter. Either way, we know that y is already provided uniquely. So no matter what the equation is, as long as you have y already isolated and there's no y's over here, um, at least therefore then you can just say that that is a function. It is already solved for y uniquely, so we're good to go. Here, these are the two examples for some reason I was getting ahead of myself on. Um, these two equations, we have to solve for our y, right? So to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to square both sides. That's going to undo the square root. Just like how I had to undo square and I took the square root, here I have to undo square root, so I square both sides. Therefore, I'm left with x squared equals 1 minus y squared. Subtract 1, subtract 1. Let's replace this over here. Negative y squared equals x squared minus 1. Divide by negative 1, divide by negative 1 y squared equals uh, x squared minus 1 over negative 1. But again, you can see that since we're solving for y squared, I've isolated my y and it's a y squared. I know from my previous results that whenever I'm solving for y squared, this is not going to produce a unique result. So this is, again, another example of not a function. And last but not least, let's go ahead and do here. Now, we can notice that my y is to the, fir is to the first power. So I'm assuming it's probably going to be a function, but let's just solve it here real quick. Square both sides. x squared equals 2 plus y minus 2 minus 2. y equals x squared minus 2. So even though it was under square root, when I solve for the y, you can see I solve for it uniquely, so it's all good. Now, we said that quadratics do not, when y is squared, um, then it's not going to produce a function because you're going to have to take the square root and you have to include even and um, positive and negative. However, what about if y is raised to the third power, right? How is that now going to affect everything? Well, we're going to go ahead and subtract. And therefore, we have y cubed equals negative x minus 1. Now, when we take the cube root to undo cubing, we'll have y equals the cube root of negative x minus 1. Now, the important thing about this is this actually is a function. And the reason why comes into the understanding of uh, the understanding of cube roots, how they compare from square roots. So let's look at again x squared, or I'm sorry, let's do y. y squared equals 8. I'm sorry, not y, 4. So when I go ahead and solve this, y equals plus or minus 2. Well then let's look at y cubed equals 8 and y cubed equals negative 8. When I take the cube root here, so I take the cube root of both sides, I get y is equal to positive 2. Because the only number that multiplies by itself three times to give me positive 8 is positive 2. In the same respect, when I take the cube root of negative 8, I get y equals negative 2. Because negative 2 is the only number that I multiply by itself three times to give me negative 8. So what happens is, when it's odd, I'm solving for y uniquely. But when it was squared, I, solving for y is not unique. So therefore, y the summary that we need to understand is y raised to any odd power is going to be unique when solving for it. So therefore, it is going to produce a function. However, when you have a y raised to an even power, it's not going to produce a function uh, when you go ahead and solve for it. All right, so therefore, we can say that this is a function. 
Now let's move to the next one. Now we have two y's. And usually when we'd want to solve for y's, this kind of produces a problem because, well, if we look at this, uh, we can't combine these two y's. However, there's two ways to combine like terms. It's either combining, combine like terms, uh, uh, combine them with like terms, I guess I have done saying that three times, or factor out a common term. So if I factor out a y, I get x minus 2 equals 1. Now I can divide by 2, or x minus 2, and I get y equals 1 over x minus 2. And that is solved uniquely, so we're all good. Uh, and the next one, now we're going to investigate absolute value. And again, remember, absolute value is like the absolute distance away from zero. So I'll get into that uh, a little bit more explanation here um, for on the second problem. But for the first problem, I think we're going to solve this using our inverse operations. And actually, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to get the y to the other side so I don't have to deal with negatives. And just by using my inverse operations, you can see that I can easily solve for y uniquely, so that is now a function. And that one's a function too, I just forgot to write it. Um, but now on the last one, let's go ahead and look at here because now we have a little issue. We need to undo this function. So the best way to you know, look at, oops, yeah, 2 minus x. So the best way to be able to kind of look at this, if you remember solving for absolute value equations, let's, uh, well, let's look at um, solving absolute value value equations like absolute of y equals um, 4. Now, what could be the values of y that equal 4? Well, unlike the square roots where your inverse operation, we know that absolute value of y could be y could equal 4. Because if I plugged in 4 in for y, absolute value of 4 is 4. Also, though, y could equal negative 4. Because if I plug negative 4 in for y, absolute value of y is still equal to 4. So what happens is, is that if I want to undo, I want to solve for y, what I need to do to undo the absolute value, I basically need to create two solutions, where y equals 2 minus x and y equals the opposite of 2 minus x. So what happens is by solving for y, by undoing the absolute value, I need to create two different cases. So therefore, y is not unique anymore because now I have two cases just like I had two cases over here. So therefore, when you have y raised to an even power, do to do, it is not a function. When you have y inside an absolute value function, it is not a function. Do, 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 do. Not a function. So for this video, that is the basic summary that I want you to take away. I hope you learned something, and I hope you uh, continue working hard, learning, and staying curious. Thanks.